There is power in the name of Jesus and it is the power that goes way, way, way beyond human imagination. A lot of people do not fully understand the power, and I'm talking power, that is in Jesus because they have not yet fully understood Jesus. And even Christians who have been reading the Bible for years, I've noticed that some of them haven't really understood the power that is in Jesus Christ. It's almost like you're reading the Bible and you know who Jesus is. You have Jesus in your heart. You have received the Holy Spirit and all of that. You've been baptized. You're reading about Jesus. You know him. Yeah, you know him. You're reading the miracles he did. But when it comes down to really understanding and experiencing Notice the word experiencing, experiencing the power of Jesus. And not a lot of people have done that. There is power in the name of Jesus. If people really knew the power that was in the name Jesus, they would go out there and execute the power and authority of Jesus and cast out demons and heal the sick and raise the dead and so on and so forth. And a lot of people don't because of their lack of faith. In the power of Jesus, their lack of faith that God can really use me to do these signs and wonders through me. You know, so I want to help you in this video really understand who Jesus is and his power. So let's start here. Jesus Christ is the son of God. The son of God. The very God. That created you and me and everyone. The very God that created this entire earth and the universe and the seas and the trees and the animals, the land. The very God that created the universe and the stars and the moon and the sun. You know, scientists are still discovering how the whole universe operates. They're still discovering after so many years. I'm talking about that God that created all of that. There is power. In this God that created all of that. God the Father. The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. The God of the Holy Bible. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He's the Messiah. He's the light of this world. He came down into a world that he created. So Jesus Christ has existed before his physical birth. In the book of Genesis... God the Father speaks and he says, let us, plural, let us make man in our image. So God the Father is speaking with someone when he says, let us make man in our image. He didn't say, let me make man in my image. He says, let us make man in our image. So there's someone there. And that is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ existed before his physical birth. When the Father speaks, and the reason we know it's Jesus Christ, because the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ is the word of God. When the Father speaks words that come out of his mouth, the words that come out of the Father's mouth are Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is the living word of God. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So the word of God is God and was God from the beginning. And then it says, I think in verse 14, and the word became flesh, became man and walked among us. Jesus Christ is the living word of God that manifest into human form and walked among us. He came down into a world that he created to be the light of the world, the light in this darkened world. Okay. The aim was for Jesus to take on all this darkness, put it upon himself and crucify it. The cross, the death of Jesus Christ is a victory because then he rose from, from the grave on the third day, which means not even death could hold him, not even the grave could hold him. He rose from the grave, which means he is alive. Jesus Christ is alive. So he was sent by God to save the world. Whoever accepts Jesus, 
Whoever receives Jesus accepts his sacrifice because he is alive, because he rose on the third day. He comes to live in you and everything he did on the cross, crucifying the works of darkness, becomes manifest in you, becomes alive in you. Changing you, transforming you from the inside out, brings life to you. This is a holy thing. This is a sacred thing. This is a spiritual thing. So God sent his son Jesus to take on the sins of the world, the darkness of the world, the curses of the self of the world, put them upon his own body. People saying, what kind of father would allow his child to go through that? Ah, where is Christ seated now? He's seated at the right hand of the power. Where he was seated before coming down, but the difference is after coming down, he is the savior of the world. It's like a door that opens and says, whoever enters through this door gets to the father. That door wasn't available in the physical realm on the earth before. This is why God sent him. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Okay. That's what Jesus did. It's like me wanting to save my family. Or anyone and I go and take on their burdens and I go and take on their sicknesses and I go and take on their worries and I take on their financial things and I take on everything so they can be set free why because I love them for God so loved them for God so loved the world that he sent his son to take on their sins Knowing good and well that on the third day his son will be raised. On the third day his son will be raised from the grave. You see, God is not looking for perfection in the now. <gasps> now he's being crucified. Now he's being whipped. Now he's suffering. God is not looking for perfection in the now. God is looking at the completion. And the completion is Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of his father where he belongs. With one difference. Before coming to the earth. That now... There's a doorway. Whoever receives Jesus becomes washed of all things of darkness and is reconciled with God. It was difficult to stay away from things of darkness before because man's heart was evil. But God says, I will write my commands not on tablets anymore as with Moses and nobody could obey because their heart was so sinful. God says, I will write my commands not on tablets anymore, on their hearts, tablet of their heart. So now it is the attitude of my heart to want to follow the ways of God. It's the attitude of my heart. They couldn't follow the commands before. It was on the stone. And I gave them an opportunity to see I need the saviour. If we could do it by ourselves, we wouldn't need a saviour. We wouldn't need Jesus. It wouldn't be necessary for God to send his son. But we can't do it by ourselves. We need Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 20 through 21. God raised Christ from the dead on the third day and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places far above principalities, above powers, above might, above dominion and above every name that is and is to come. Jesus Christ is the power. He is seated high above every name, every principality, every power. It's Jesus Christ. It's all Jesus Christ. This is the power in the name of Jesus. So every force of darkness that is operating in your life, know that you know that you know that Jesus Christ has power and authority over that. And Jesus is the one that can set you free. He sets the captives free. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Jesus Christ came and destroyed the works of darkness. It's about allowing him to reign in your life so he can start manifesting the finished work of the cross. The finished work of the cross is it's finished. Darkness has already been destroyed. Sickness has already been defeated. Curses have already been done with. Death has also been defeated. Because he rose from the grave. Not even the grave could hold him. It's the power of Jesus. The power of Jesus. He is the name above every name. There is nothing in your life that he does not have power over. And I, 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 I encourage you to surrender to him. Surrender. 
we're so busy and okay with living life as I choose in the world. Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but just be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We're so happy, okay with living in the ways of this world. However, most humans are living by default mode. Being a friend of the world, the Bible says if you are a friend of the world, you are an enemy of God. Because the two don't mix together, they conflict together. Because the Bible says the world is under the sway of the evil one, Satan, is influencing the world. You can't be a friend of the world and a friend of God. They're in conflict with one another. We're so happy to be living in this way of the world that is evil, corrupt, or even Christians who maybe are not going out there intentionally doing evil, but are lukewarm. In other words, they're not doing anything. They're not saving anyone. They're not setting any captives free. That's evil within itself. Not going out to set the captives captive free, leave, leaving the captive in captivity, in darkness. Uh, we're so happy living in this way. And then we say, why did, God allow, why did God allow that to happen in my life? Why did God take my grandson? Why did God allow my child to be an, a, a, a drug addict? And then they start pointing fingers at God. Psalm 91 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Psalm chapter, Psalm chapter 91 verse 1. He who abides... He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In other words, he who dwells with God, in other words, you're living with God. You're not here in the world and then when I remember God, I go and speak with him or whatever. And then I go back in the world or, mm, I, well, I know that's what God says, but I'd rather be living in this entertainment of the world right now. And, and, and I'll come and say a, a superficial prayer at night or I'll just be a Sunday churchgoer. Or um, I'll just read my Bible a little bit during the evening or in the morning. And then I'm living how I want to live. And not following the commands of Jesus Christ. You're not dwelling in the secret place of the Most High if you're doing that. And the Bible says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In other words, he who dwells with God, lives continuously with God, shall be under God's protection. So we're living in the ways of this world. And then we say, why did God allow that to happen? And we start pointing fingers at God as opposed to pointing fingers at ourselves and saying, why am I not dwelling in the secret place of God? It's like drinking poison because the worldly way is toxic, is poisonous, is evil, wicked, corrupt. It's like drinking poison and getting sick and then saying, why did God allow me to get sick? Why are you drinking poison? Or what did you want? Did you want to be drinking poison and God's always above you, cancelling that poison? Or always fornicating, but God's above you, cancelling that so you, you don't get sexually transmitted diseases? Or always injecting heroin in your arms, but God's above you, always saving your life from overdose? Or um, always blaspheming, but God's above you, cancelling that. Or you're always speaking curses, but God is above you, protecting you. Why would God always be above you, above you, above you? Uh, 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 bringing you into blessings, bringing you into freedom, bringing you into this when you're just sinning, 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 sinning. Doesn't make sense. It's like drinking poison and God is cancelling that. You're drinking poison, cancelling that. Drinking poison, cancelling that. Why would God do that? You drink poison. God will permit you to get sick. So then you say, oh, I shouldn't drink poison. Doesn't that make more sense? You know, Father, please bless this water. God permitted the thorn in Paul's flesh. Say, so why did God allow my... grandson to be in an accident I don't know everything but what I do know the Bible says the head of the house is God and then the head is the husband and then the head is the wife and then below are the children so there's an order in the house 
was God, did that household have God as the head? Because if the answer is no, that answers your question. The, hus the man being the head of the house, did he have his family covered with the blood of Jesus? Was the glory of God in that house? Was the Holy Spirit in that house? Is the father being the, the head of the house, which is the protector of the house, have God as the head? And was he covering his house with the protection of God? And the mom is above the children. Were they covered? Or were they lukewarm? Or were they just Sunday churchgoers? Or were they backsliders? Or were they... I'm in the world, but I'll say my prayer at night. See, that's the problem with a lot of Christians. They think that just by saying a few prayers, reading a few Bible verses, being a Sunday Sunday churchgoer, they think that's Christian living. That is not Christian live, living. You've been deceived if you think that is Christian living. That's not what Jesus asked you to do. Jesus asked you to go out there and make disciples of the nations. In other words, go out there and save people. If you're not saving people, you expect your family to be saved. You expect you and your family to be okay when you're disobeying, directly disobeying the commands of God. So it's okay for other people's children not to be saved. That's okay. If you're going with that mind, that's not the mind of God. Are you listening to the voice of God? Because if you were listening to the voice of God, I know that I know that I know that God would have shown red flags regarding as an example why the grandchild died in a car accident god would have said don't go there take this part do that do this that way this way careful yeah. were you listening to the voice of god do you even know the voice of god it's like saying why did god allow my son to be a, 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 a drug addict god allowed your son to be a drug addict so it's not the work of the devil it's the work of god you say yeah but i know it's the work of the devil but why didn't god protect me well, again, it's like drinking that poison. It's like drinking that poison. I want to drink that poison and then I get sick. And why did God allow me to get sick? Why are you not abiding in the secret place of the Most High? Why are we so quick to blame God? You know, the enemy wants nothing more than for you to blame God. Surrender to God. Get to know who he is. There's power in his name to set every captive free. I've seen God break addiction from someone who was 20 years in heavy, heavy, heavy drugs. And it was broken from one day to the next. This person did not even go through with, it didn't go, he didn't experience withdrawal symptoms. It was just cut. That's the power of God. I've seen people with arthritis, Parkinson's, they just healed from one second to the next. That's the power of God. I've seen suicidal thoughts and depression be lifted off of someone's mind in just one second. It's just gone. The power of God. God gives commands in the Bible. There's a way, there's a structure, there's an order in which he works. And let's stop following that order. Let's stop straying here and there, getting outside of God's order and then saying, well, why did God allow that to happen? Well, why didn't you stay within the order of God? Get in the presence of God. Stay there. Live and breathe from that place. Eat from that place. Get to know who he is. Get to know his character. He made you in his image. Get to know his character so you know the image that you are. Get to know his voice. There is power in the name of Jesus. Nothing is impossible with him. There is power, power, power in the name of Jesus. Nothing is impossible with him. He can change the mind. He can change the heart. He can change the soul. He can change the body. He can change someone's life. There is healing. There is freedom. There is deliverance. There is peace even in the middle of the storm. There is love and joy, an abundance of joy that doesn't depend on your circumstances. It's just an abundance of joy being within you because you are aware of Jesus Christ who is in you. There is gentleness and kindness and goodness. There's the power of Jesus. It can transform your life forever, ever, ever. And then you will be the light. that You will be a vessel that carries the light of God that radiates from within, outside of you. That can then touch other people, bringing the light to them. Changing entire people, changing situations, changing territories, changing nations. This is the power of Jesus. The 12 disciples of Jesus turned the whole world upside down. There is power in the name of Jesus for you, for your family, for your neighborhood, for your territory, for your nation. 
it's important that you understand the power of Jesus. Surrender to him. Make time for him. Surrender your life to him. Allow him to th sit on the throne of your heart. Delight to do his will. Get in the Bible to know who he is. And then start living the truth of the gospel. And you will see the power of Jesus in your life. You will see the power of Jesus in your life. With that, with that being said, if this ministry is blessing you and you want to bless back, there's an offering link below. My books, links are below. Worldly Life of Deception, Who is God, Spiritual Warfare, <coughs> New Age Accords of Jesus Christ, and this is Grace. God bless you.